Okay, so the point of all of this standardizing that we had was to be able to do these kinds of questions that we've got that are coming up here. So I've just said, in the last section, you may have thought, what's the point of standardizing to Z when I can just use the distribution mode of my calculator? Which is fair, but both forward and reverse normal lookups on the calculator required you to specify what the mean and the standard deviation were, okay? Now, in this case, I am being told that x is being normally distributed with a standard deviation of 3, but I do not know what the mean is. But what they tell me is they tell me a piece of information, and I'm going to try and use that piece of information to go backwards to find out what the mean is. Now, you cannot guess what the mean is. You cannot just keep trying out values until you see something that works. What we do here is we use z to standardize. We have to use standardizing for this. This is why the standard normal distribution is going to be helpful for us. So I'm going to start off with this statement that I've got here. And it says the probability that x is greater than 20 is equal to 0 0.2. And I'm just going to draw a sketch of what this might look like. Here is 20. And this probability over here is 0 0.2. Now, further maths, not further maths, graphics calculators, you can switch the tail to the right-hand side if you wanted to. If you don't have a graphics calculator, we need our tail to be on the left-hand side. So I'm going to switch this around and say the probability that x is less than 20 is 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. Now, I'm going to try and find out what the probability that z is less than a particular value is as 0 0.8. And then I'm going to try and connect these two statements together using the idea of standardizing. So I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to try and standardize, um, not standardize, I'm going to try and find out the inverse probability. So I want it to be on the left. I'm on the inverse normal mode here. I want the area to be 0 0.8. And because I don't know what the mean is, there's no point in me trying to say, what was the standard deviation? The standard deviation is 3. There's no point in me putting the standard deviation as 3 because I don't know what the mean is. So instead of trying to do the one that I don't have enough information for, I say, I'm going to say the standard deviation is 1 and that the mean is 0. I'm going to pretend that it's the Z, the Z distribution, and then I know my way of converting between X and Z. So this gives me 0 0.8416. So in this case here, we now know that A is 0 0.8416. How am I going to go between this and this thing? What connects them? Use the coded formula. The thing that connects those things together is I know to go from X to Z, I take the x value, I subtract the what? I subtract the mean, and I divide by the standard deviation, which is 3. And what would that give me? The z value, which is 0 0.8416. OK? So you get that 20 minus mu equals 3 times 0 0.8416. Rearranging that, those two swap places. You get 20 minus 3 times 0 0.8416 is equal to the mean. So I'll do that on my regular calculator. 20 minus 3 times 0 0.8416 is 17.4752, which I'm just going to say is 17.5. I don't know what the context of this, but I'm just going to say it to one decimal place. Okay? You could check to see if your answer makes sense. So I'm going to go back to my calculator for a second and just see if 17.5 is a reasonable answer. Well, first of all, look at the graph. 17.5 would be in the middle, and 20 is on the right-hand side. So that makes sense to begin with. But I'm going to go and look at the calculator. And I'm now going to just do a normal distribution with a cumulative. And they told me that it was the probability that x is greater than 20. So I'll put in 20. What did I call that? Whoosh, 
massive. Um, and the standard deviation is 3, and we've just calculated it as 17.5, right? We're hoping that the answer is going to be 0 0.2. And it's close to 0 0.2. Why is it not exactly 0 0.2? Because I did some rounding, didn't I? I what, what could I have changed the 17? 17.4752. 17 and then look, it's really, 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 really close to 0 0.2. So we actually know that we've got the question correct because we were able to check it by putting it back into our calculator. So that was an unknown value for the mean there. The way you know that there's an unknown value, sometimes they won't actually tell you this thing at the beginning. Sometimes they might just be talking about the measurements of a particular thing and they might not mention what the mean is and then they might randomly tell you a piece, uh, probability about it. That probability is the key that allows you to unlock that information about the unknown thing that you had there. So can I go on to the next bit? Yeah. Sir. Yeah. You only worked out what mean is. Yeah. Why did you put the standard deviation of mean to one and zero? Because I needed to, in order to use this coding process that I have here, this coding process relies on the fact that I'm going from x to z. And for z, we know that z is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation as 1. So in order to be able to use this connection that I've got here, I have to use the, 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 the facts that it actually comes with. Otherwise, I just have a mixture. I have to standardize it in that way. And you need to know that that's the way it's standard done. So the one I've got here, um, it says a machine makes metal sheets with width x centimetres modelled as a normal distribution such that x is normally distributed. We know that the mean is 50, but this time I don't know what the standard deviation is. And I've written on the side there, the method here is exactly the same as before. Use a sketch to determine whether you're expecting a positive or negative z value. And then you look up the z value in the tables if you can, but I actually just prefer using the calculator and then you use the coding, OK? The calculator will do more of the work than the tables. So it says here, given that the probability that x is less than 46 is equal to 0 0.2119. So I'm going to draw a sketch. This time I know that 50 is the mean, so I can put the 50 here. And 46 is therefore going to have to be on this side. And I know that this area is 0 0.2119. So you're tempted to just go straight in and do the inverse on your calculator. But this is where you're going to hit a roadblock. You're not going to be able to deal with this when you try and type it in, because you don't know what it is. So instead, you're going to work out the probability that z is less than a particular value being 0.2119. And we're going to find out what that particular value is by using the inverse. And remember, when we use the inverse, we're going to say that mu is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 when I type that in for my inverse. So let's come back over here. I'm going to go onto the inverse. And I want the tail to be, what was the probability, 0 0.2119? Yeah. And I have to standardize it, which means I need to do 1 and 0 which gives me negative, careful of that negative, negative 0 0.7998. So I know that when I standardize this thing, I get this thing. When I standardize this, I get this. So I'm just going to write that out. If you want to add this to your notes, when I standardize 46, I get minus 0 0.7998. So 46 subtract the mean divided by the standard deviation equals minus 0 0.7998. The quick way of finding sigma here is it's like almost like these two things swap places, don't they? So you've got 46 minus 50, that's minus 4, divided by minus 0 0.7998 is equal to the standard deviation. 5.0096. So we can just say it's 5.0 to, what is it, in, in centimetres, 5.0 centimetres to one decimal place. OK?
Now, we could check this to see if it makes sense. So I'm actually going to say, I'm going to do a check. I'll do a normal distribution, and I'll do a cumulative distribution. What did it want the probability? Was it um, less than 46? Yeah. So I'll do a really, really negative number, 46, standard deviation of 5, and mean of 50, and you get 0 0.2119. So we found the right answer, OK? So we know it's correct. Yeah. Yes? If you're trying, if you don't know one of these things here, you have to use this to be able to find out the value that matches the coding up. You have to do that. You can't do, you can't have put 46 and then one. You have to do zero and one as a matching one because this is how the, this thing is based on that thing happening, okay? Now it wants us to find the 90th percentile of the widths. So we want it to be the 90th percentile, meaning that we want to find out what is the value over here such that the probability is 0 0.9. The 90th percentile meaning it's the 90th one along if it was as a percentage. So this time we want the probability that x is less than this value a here is going to be 0 0.9. Well, we can actually just find that out straight away because we now actually know the information to go onto our calculator. So we want, on the inverse, the tail to be 0 0.9. We've got that the standard, uh, sorry, the standard deviation is 5 and then uh, the mean is 50, which we've just worked out. And so we get that it's 56.4. So we get A is 56.4 centimetres to one decimal place. So part B is the same as before. It's just they will normally get you to do something to find out what sigma is, and then you continue with the rest of the question, which may include things that we've done in the last lesson that we had on normal distribution. So we've done one about if you have a missing mu, and if you have a missing standard, and sigma, a missing standard deviation. What comes up next is... Both of, them are missing. Both of them are missing, okay? Both of them are missing. Now notice, because we had one of them missing, they had to tell us one fact. Because we had one of them missing here, they had to tell us one fact. Because we have both of them missing, they have to tell us two facts and then you do simultaneous equations. So if both mu and sigma are missing, we end up with simultaneous equations, which you must solve. They're actually really easy. These used to be one of the most horrible questions in the old exam, but now we've got our calculators that can solve simultaneous equations. They're just easy. You don't have to like carry all of these numbers in your head. They're just easy. So it says the weight, y grams of soup put into a carton by machine B is normally distributed with a mean mu and standard deviation sigma. So y is normally distributed with a mean and sigma like this. We have been told the probability that y is less than 160 is 0 0.99. So I'm just going to draw a quick sketch. Yep, y less than 160, this probability is 0 0.99. So I can go to my z's. The probability that z is less than a is going to be 0 0.99. So I'm going to find out what A is. I don't mind if you don't write this sentence down here, OK? You can go and cut that out if you need to. So we're going to say it's going to be an inverse. And we want the left tail to be 0 0.99. What do I want for the standard deviation and the mu? And so we get 2.3263. Two point three two six three. So, which are the two things? Which is the one that standardizes that? What number standardizes to this? The one sixty. When I subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation, I get two point three two six three. So, I'm just going to rearrange this. So, I get one sixty equals mu plus two point three two six three. Sigma. And I'm just going to do the same thing. 
this time I want the probability that y is greater than 152 is 0 0.9. Is it a right? Is it the tail at the right or the wrong end? <laughs> it's at the wrong end, so we need to do a subtracting here. If I just do a quick sketch, we want the probability that it's bigger than 152 to be 0 0.9. Obviously, if you have the graphics calculator, you can switch the tail to the right end. But if you don't, you're going to have to use the other end and say the probability that y is less than 152 is 0 0.1. So we could actually go straight in to our calculator. I can just say, what is this value going to be? So I know that when I standardize 152, I'm going to get, going back to my calculator, on the inverse mode, I'm changing the probability this time to 0 0.1, and you get minus 0.12816. Minus 1.2816. So when I rearrange this, I get 152 equals mu minus 1.2816 sigma. You'll see I just grabbed this value from my calculator straight away. And then all I'm going to do is put those things in to my simultaneous equation solver. So I will go on my one here. So A was the value of mu. And then it was 2 point, how much is it? 3, 2? No, it's 2 point... 3263, three, three, and that was equal to 160. Yeah. And then the next one was 1 for mu minus 1.2816. 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 and that was equal to 152. Yeah. And then, so that's just to mirror this equation and this equation. And then when I solve this, I get that mu is 154.8, and sigma is, is 2.22. 2 it's a minus in front of it, yeah. Oh, did I not put a minus in front of it in my calculator? I think I did, actually. Yeah. So it looks like we get that sigma is... 2.22 and mu is 154.8. And this is going to be grams, and this is also going to be grams. Could you, how could you check your answer? Okay, I'm going to sub them in and just check. So I'm now going to go back to the distribution. And we're going to say that the less than 160 sigma was 2.22 mu was 154.8 and you get 0 0.99 and the other one was greater than 152 and you get 0. Point, 0 0.9 roughly Okay, so I'll leave it on that page, but we've got one, two, two questions to try here, and then you're going to try some. In fact, I think this is probably the one that we should try that we'll do here, because this is an exam question. We've got 15 minutes. It's probably about the right amount of time for us to have a go at doing this one. Okay, so I'll leave it on this, and then we'll go possibly at the start of next lesson.